India's Western Ghats, a 1,600-kilometer-long mountain range defined by some of the most spectacular landscapes known to humans. Older than the Himalayas and characterized by the monsoon, the Western Ghats are home to towering mountains, mighty rivers, impenetrable jungles, and their unique residents. The Western Ghats are a lifeline to people and wildlife that live in and around them. Today, these ancient landscapes are no longer shaped by the forces of nature, but by humans as well, to fulfill their ever-growing need for space and resources. However, a few people have taken up the challenge of preserving these mountains and their biodiversity. They have joined hands with local people and conservationists in the hope that they can turn the tide in favour of the Western Ghats landscapes. Fresh water sources in Goa are all coming from the Western Ghats. The major rivers are all originating within the Western Ghats. The irony with mining and water is that the higher grade ore forms the bedrock beneath the mountains. When mining companies go below the water table, when they hit the water table and reach much below that, the primary source of water, the groundwater, is being affected. So areas in and around mining regions are suffering in Goa mainly due to water shortage. Projects such as mining require something called an environment clearance, which allows them to carry on mining in a particular area. Any non-forest activity which is being carried out in a forest area requires to obtain a forest clearance. Projects that are leniently granted environment and forest clearance go unchecked, causing damage to wildlife and environment around. CEPF funding has benefited our project by allowing us to provide third-party assistance to government by way of reviewing those projects which come for clearance under environment and forest laws. By reviewing these projects, we try to provide some inputs on sensitive projects which could cause damage to wildlife and environment. Local communities are the custodians of the land and the environment and the forests and wildlife that surround them. Any destructive developmental activity will impact them directly. This is where we try to play a small role by supporting the local communities to raise and highlight environmental issues and bring them out in public domain. Uttar Kannada district, it's a junction between the Northern Western Guards and the Southern Western Guards. I am from this district. I am born, brought up and living in this district. Lion tailed macaque is uh, one of the most endangered species from this region. And we have one of the largest hornbill population in this district. My father used to hunt uh, in the forest. So I have seen most of this wildlife as dead uh, as a child. I think that made me to work on saving this forest. The people have their own style of livelihoods, the self-sustained style of livelihoods, which completely depends on these particular valleys and they get everything from cultivation or surrounding forest. The habitats have been distracted because of fragmentation of the landscapes. Most of these species are very sensitive to the fragmentation. So the fragmentation directly impacted the density of wildlife. The scientific research has shown the importance of this landscape, but there was a, a gap between the scientific community and local activists. Researchers are doing research on their own and uh, activists are doing their conservation activism on their own. There was a need to bridge that gap. What I did was just join these dots using existing information. 
The grant came in a right moment actually. This was one of the largest non-protected area. 414 square kilometers of this landscape have been protected and also the four river valleys have been protected. Conservation is not just science or social aspects or policies. It should be the integration of all these approaches. If you fail in that, I think the conservation also fails. Rocky plateaus are special landforms. They are geomorphologically recognized areas which have been formed for over a million years. Rocky plateaus are very important for the communities which are living in this area. Their main dependence is on water, which is entirely coming from the sides of these plateaus. Gauridhangar community graze their cattle on these plateaus. And although the grazing is only there for one or two months of monsoon, it is still an important service to the local people. For eight months, they are totally dry. They are like arid deserts. Whereas for four months, they are entirely stagnated by water. The biodiversity that we see on the plateaus is very interesting. You have flora and fauna which is adapted to such harsh conditions. And that is why it becomes a very special habitat. Many of the plateaus are actually outside of management by the forest. It has been very easy for the mining sector or the wind farm sector or real estate developers to prove that these plateaus are barren. The neglect that biodiversity of plateaus has faced is because of society's understanding of this habitat. Our project's first objective was to network and create a link between different people who are interested in plateau conservation. CEPF grants were quite helpful for the project because we could get so many people together for workshops, get them to interact with each other. Now there is a common vision that plateaus, ecology needs to be protected. We are very fortunate in Northern Western Ghats to have a large student community. Many of the students uh, started working with the scientists. They started creating projects which are focusing on the ecology of the plateaus. There needs to be a greater awareness regarding how important non-forest habitats are. Local villagers feel a pride that people are coming from all over the place, all over India and even abroad to come and see their place. We need to orient people that it's not always in terms of money that one can gain. One can gain in terms of beauty, one can gain in terms of presence of certain area, what we call as existence value. And I think our future conservation, at least in this area, needs to be taking these values into account. These highly committed representatives of civil society with appropriate and timely support from ATRI and CEPF have been able to make a tangible difference towards conserving the rich biodiversity and ecosystem services of these landscapes. It is time for all of us to look in the direction these people have shown us and try conserve our ecosystems. <laughs>